blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. Kendra, come on, give us a word. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can you help me thank God for the set man, the visionary of this awesome school, Dr. Perkins, in his absence on today? Uh, many of us know that if it had not been for an Apex School of Theology, the dream of having a D-Men or having a Master's in Divinity would just be just a, fi a figment of our imagination. But we thank God for Dr. Perkins. Can you help me th thank God for the Dean of this D-Men program, Dr. Maxwell? <laughs> Amen. Up for all of our mentors in the house on today that, that leads us, guides us, that gives us that push, that second win when we want to give up and give out. Amen. All right. Um, just before I jump into the word of God, I am humbled and so very grateful this opportunity to stand before you to serve on today. Um, I did bring just a few ministry resources and products with me on today. Um, my first book entitled Rivers of Life is a collection of homilies. So when your get up and go is got up and went and you need a little encouragement yourself, Rivers of Life is that thing for you. Because oftentimes who encourages the encourager? If you're preaching, you're encouraging, and you're praying for everybody else. Sometimes you need a little multivitamin to rejuvenate you, refresh you, and restore you rivers of life. My second book entitled No More Discounts. This book is written by a single for singles. So if you have singles in your ministry who need to understand their true worth and value and how to recover from broken, toxic relationships, you may want to pick up um, No More Discounts. Can you help me thank God for my mother? If you would stand, mama. My ride or die chick who rolls with me and serves with me. If you're interested in any of these resources or um, preaching, teaching CDs, you can see her at the table in the back. Is anybody ready for a word? Ready or not, here we go. If you would go with me in the word of God to 2 Kings chapter 4, looking at verse 17 through 20. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17 through 20, and also Ephesians 6, verse number 12. 2 Kings 4, 17 through 20, Ephesians 6, verse number 12. And the word of the Lord declares, 2 Kings 4, and the woman conceived and bear a son at the season that Elijah had said unto her according to this time of life. And when she was grown, and when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. Verse 20, and when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees till noon and then died. Ephesians 6 and 12 declares, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. I would like to use for a topic on this morning two simple words, fight on. So why don't you slap your neighbor five and look at them eyeball to eyeball and tell them fight on. I don't care what you've been through, what you may have to go through, tell them one more time, fight on. Amen. In this place on today, I wonder if there's anybody here who can identify with this Shunammite woman. Have you been living life on life terms and then up out of nowhere, something comes up that zaps your strength, shakes your faith to the point that you get weary while waiting. Now, you know the text, this woman, the Shunammite woman, she was faithful, she was serving, she even built a little place in her home, a hospitality suite for the man of God as he was passing through town. And if you know the text, this woman of God, she received a prophetic word. Elijah spoke to her. By this time next year, you'll have a son. So without a delay, the word of God manifested and she had a son. I'm in the book. So on this day, the boy was in the field with his father and he said, my head, my head. And suddenly he died. What do you do when the promise that God gave to you you look like it's about to die. What do you do when the vision?
vision that God has given you, it looked like it ain't going to come to pass. I come to let somebody know this morning, fight on. Come on here, somebody. The battle may be hard, but baby, it's time to put on the whole armor of God and show up for your life, show up for your vision, and fight on. Are y'all hearing me up in here on this morning? I wonder if there's anybody here, Dr. Battle, who's been in a fight mentally, who's been in a fight physically. The doctors have given you a prognosis and you're still in a fight. I wonder if there's anybody up in here on today that you're in a fight financially. Your money is funny and your change is strange, but you're still in a fight. On this morning, there may be some of you, we see the glory, but we really don't know your story. You looked apart, but behind the mask, we don't know the nights that you cried, the nights that you walked the floor, because you're in a fight, fighting for your life, fighting for your purpose, fighting for your destiny. Good God Almighty, tell somebody, fight on. Fight on. Oftentimes, it gets tough living life on life's term. What do you do, demon scholars, when you're praying and you're fasting and believing God for everybody else? But what do you do when you find yourself like Hannah, that you're a woman or a man of a sorrowful spirit? Because it seems like the more you pray, it keeps happening for everybody else. What do you do when you find yourself like the woman with an issue of blood? You didn't got a diagnosis and you didn't been to every doctor in town and you didn't spit all that you had in copays, but it looks like your condition hasn't gotten any better, but rather worse. What do you do? What do you do when you find yourself like Jesus and you've been betrayed and somebody sold you out for 20 little shekels of silver and to tell the truth, you mad, you're angry, and you just want to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What do you do when you like that man laying at the pool of Bethesda? You waiting for somebody. Can you just help a sister out? Can you just help me get my breakthrough? But the people that you helped, they didn't walk on past because everybody trying to get theirs. That it's all about me, myself, and I. What do you do when you've been fighting a good fight of faith, but you don't have no fight left? Which are some of you in this place on today. And I'm glad that you're here. Because I come to decree and declare like that of Jesus in Mark chapter 5. He showed up on the scene and he said, Dansmo, arise. So I come to perform spiritual CPR this morning to let somebody know, arise. Arise from that place of frustration. Arise out of that place of agitation. It was a good hit, but it couldn't take you out. Look at somebody and say, fire. Fight! Fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on. You may say, well, Kendra, I don't feel like fighting. I don't feel like fighting no more. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This thing serving God ain't always easy. I'm just tired. Asha. But I come to let you know this morning, you ain't got no choice but to fight, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. You got to fight, fight for your purpose and your destiny. Why should you keep fighting, William? Because God will keep his promises. God is not like man. If he said it, that settles it. You know the book, it says 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. You got to get up every morning and tell yourself yes and amen. No matter what it looks like, I still hear a yes. I still hear an amen. You got to fight on. The word promise is defined as a contract, a covenant, an oath, a pledge, an enforceable agreement between two parties. Don't you know it's a contract over your life? You are in covenant with God. The big G who's in control of everything in the heavens and the earth, he got your back. So you got to fight on. The fight is fixed, baby. The Bible is full of promises. Like if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask, you can ask, you can ask whatsoever you will and it shall be done. It's loaded with promises like no good thing will he withhold from you. You got a promise. Promises that if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord 
your God. What did he say? Blessed shall you be in the city. You got a promise. So if you got a promise, you pregnant with possibilities. You pregnant with breakthroughs. You pregnant with abundance. So don't you abort your dream. Don't abort your breakthrough, but fight on. Fight on. Because one thing for certain and two things for sure, Curtis, the grass may wither. The flowers may fade away. But the word of God is going to stand forever. And here's the good news. The promises of God ain't got no expiration date. Are y'all hearing me? The promises of God has no expiration date. You may be here today and you've been delayed. It looked like your breakthrough been held up. Well, let me tell you something. Delay don't mean denial. If you've ever flown on a plane, sometimes you've been delayed. And the pilot keeps going round and round. You don't know why you still in the air. But could it be the one that's in charge? He sees something that you don't see. He sees some turbulence. He see it's an attack of the enemy. So what I want you to do, baby, is just ride. Ride the process out. Ride. Just ride. Just ride. So real quick, I, I got to give y'all some tips on how to fight through these next few intensive to fight for your demon, to fight for the anointing that's on your life. Are y'all hearing me? So I want you to use your imagination like I'm a spiritual, physical trainer this morning. Because my responsibility this morning is to teach you how to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, you can kick butt and take names. It ain't time to be punking out to the devil. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You got to fight. So number one, if you are going to defeat the giants in your life, the first thing you got to do is get your mind right. Look at somebody and tell them, get your mind right. What do I mean by that? You have to get your faith on cue. The enemy would love to contaminate your faith to get you to believe that your dream is not possible. But you got to leave that doubt alone and get your mind right. The Bible says in Romans 1 and 17 that the just shall live by faith. Your faith is your lifeline. It's your faith that keeps you going and moving forward even when you don't see how all these pieces is going to come together. You got to get your faith on cue. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 28 that all of these things is going to work together. The word all is defined as the inclusion of everything and the exclusion of nothing. What does that mean? It's all got a purpose. The good, the bad, the ugly, the disappointments, the rejection, the heartbreak, it's all got a purpose. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, if that's not enough, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It takes faith to sign up for a demon program. It takes faith to fill out financial aid. It takes faith to come to intensive after intensive. Does anybody got some faith? Now, look, I hate to pop your bubble, but you don't have to have Benny Hinn's faith to get a healing. You ain't got to have Bill Gates' faith to get a financial breakthrough. You might say, well, Kendra, what you talking about? My faith ain't like theirs, so maybe, ha, 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 You have been dealt a measure of faith. You have been endowed with enough power to open up a can of whoop behind on the devil. You, the, the Bible says, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. You are equipped. You are empowered. So in the word of that movie, you are smart, you are kind, and you is important. So God has given you everything that you need to succeed, to excel. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. You've got to keep fighting. You may say, well, Kendra, how do I build my faith? I don't know all them scriptures like that. 
I'm glad you asked. Because the Bible said faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So let me take you to Sunday school real quick. If you going through a little something in your life, find you a scripture. Just one scripture that applies to what you going through. You decree and declare that scripture over your life. I told you we ain't fighting against flesh and blood. We fighting against spirits. We fighting against principalities. So you can't fight with your physical fist, but you got to fight with the word. Are y'all hearing me? So let's, for example, let's practice. If you didn't went to the doctor and they said you got three weeks to live, don't you accept that report? You better fight with the word of God. Fight with the word like Isaiah. He was wounded for my transgressions. Yeah, doc, you reporting science, but let me report the truth. That he, by his stripes, I'm healed. Somebody say fight. Fight with the word that no infirmity can live in my body. Fight with the word that he is able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. You got to fight. If your money is all jacked up, you better fight with the word. I don't care what your credit say. Be disciplined, but fight with the word in the meantime. The word that says, I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed, begging, praying. You, if God is your father, we call him Abba. When have you seen his name in the paper that he was behind on child support? No, sir. If God is my father and I'm a king's kid, he's obligated to supply all of my needs. You better fight with the word. Fight with the word that my barns shall be plenteous and good, and I'm going to owe no man nothing but to love them. Fight with the word that I shall lend to many, but I ain't never got to borrow. Are you hearing me? If your family is all out of whack, your children acting like Chucky and Ben Laden, like they done lost their mind, you better fight with the word, honey. That my whole household shall be saved. The fruit of my womb is blessed. You got to decree and declare. You a king's kid. You got the right to decree and to denounce and interrupt the devil's plan. Somebody say fight. In Chinese, the word crisis is defined with two distinctive characters. Anybody speak Chinese? Those two characters for the word crisis, one has says opportunity and the other one says danger so could it be what you perceive to be a crisis that it's a dead end a flat line situation that there is no hope could it be that this is a divine opportunity not a crisis it's not dangerous an opportunity for God to show the devil just how bad he is I'm just saying could it be could it be that God wants to use your life to be a demonstration dispensation to prove to all them Negrites, you know we got Jebusites and all them, but all them Negrites who said you would never make it, who said you won't amount to anything. Could it be that God wants to use this storm, this trouble, this fight that you're in to show himself strong, to show himself mighty? You have got to fight. Don't go give up before the miracle happens. So the truth is, number one, you got to get your mind right and get your faith on cue. Because we've all been through enough to make us cry. But Wes, I told the devil that ain't enough to make me quit. Let me say that again. We've been through enough to make us cry. But that ain't enough to make us quit. I don't want none of y'all in here to not be here next time. Because you're going to fight through your feelings, fight through your issues, fight through your struggles, and get your mind right and live this thing out. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Number two, not only must you get your faith on cue, number two, you got to put first things first. First things first. In our text, this Shunammite woman, okay, her son died. But nowhere in the text did she call baby Nim to say, girl, you got to pray. Nowhere in the text did she call her mama and say, mama, this boy didn't die. She wasn't trying to call all the doctors in town. Look at the text. The Bible says she took the boy back to the place where she received the prophetic word. Do y'all remember I just told you a little synopsis of the story? That the man of God spoke to her, by this time next year you'll have a son. This woman had her priorities straight. According to Matthew 6 and 33, she sought first the kingdom of God. She put the boy back in the room and then she did what? Number two, she shut the door. If you going to fight the good fight of faith, not only must you get your faith on cue, not only must you put first things first, but the third thing is you got to
got to shut the door. What am I saying? You got to cut the suckers loose. If there are folks in your life who don't believe like you believe, who don't have the faith to birth out your promise, cut the suckers loose. You are fighting for your life, fighting for your purpose. You ain't got time to be entertaining gnats and teethy flies. Their whole assignment is to distract you, to derail you, but you got to shut the door. Anybody know the Tater family? The Tater family are serial killers. They're serial killers that will do a few things. Let me tell you what they'll do. They'll rob you mentally, rape you spiritually, and leave you pregnant with twins named something and nothing. Rob you mentally, rape you spiritually, and leave you pregnant with twins named something and nothing. Well, who is the tater heads? I'm glad you asked. The father of this family name is Dick. Dick Tater. If you don't deal with the dictators in your life, they're going to dictate you at your promise. The mother of this family's name is Emma. Emma Tater. Imitator and the dictators in your life, if you don't cut them off, they gonna have you over here doing something that God ain't called you to do. Cut the taters loose. And you know if you don't deal with them spirits, they gonna multiply and have some children. So they got a son named Speck. Spectator. So his spectators are, they surrounding themselves trying to figure out what you doing. You know how they do. They smile in your face, but all the time they want to take your place. You better get rid of dictator, imitator, spectator, and the baby girl agitator too. Cut the suckers loose. Verse 21, I didn't make it up, uh, Miss Hennett. The scriptures say she shut the door. You got to shut some doors in your life. Some people about to wear your door off the hinge. They keep coming in and out, out and in, in and out. You got to rise up and say, nah, -uh, enough is enough. Realize that no is a full sentence and no explanations are needed. You are fighting for your life. Number four, after you shut the door, you got to stay focused. Somebody say stay focused. In staying focused, look at verse 24 in 2 Kings chapter 4. This mother was fighting for her life, so she had to make a decision to stay focused. Verse 24, she told her assistant, look, get my donkey ready, and we finna ride. Don't you stop until I say stop. When I say slow down, that's when you slow down. In this season of your life, you don't have time, Stacy, to be distracted. You don't have time to be looking to the left or looking to the right. But in this season, you got to keep your face as flint. Keep your eyes on the prize. You got six intenses to get this baby done. So you got to fight with your focus. Number five, not only must you get your faith and your mind right, two, put first thing first, three, shut the doors, four, stay focused. Number five, you got to maintain a positive confession of faith. Uh-huh, a positive confession of faith. In text, verse 26, notice it was some signifying folks who heard Miss Shooter Mike was going through something, Monica. They heard all about her business. So this is what they did. Miss Shooter Mike woman, is everything okay? Signifying. They ain't got no solution, but they were signifying trying to get up in her business. But check out the Shooter Mike, verse 26. I ain't making it up. She said, all is well. What am I challenging you? If you're going to fight and win, don't use your mouth to say anything that contradicts what you believe in God for. Are you hearing me? You hold the pen of a ready writer. You can have what you say. The Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. So you got to say it, say it, say it until you see it. I know y'all thinking, well, this girl is out of her mind. Guess what? We were created in the image of God, right? Okay. In Genesis, God said it, said it, said it. Look at Genesis 1. He said, 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 the hoop, there it is. He began to saw her. So what will happen if you start decreeing and declare, I shall be a doctorate of ministry candidate in May of 2017. I'm going to complete these EQ courses by any means necessary. What will happen if you start confessing what you're going to have and not giving life to your struggle? Maintain a positive confession of faith. 
That's what this shooter might did. She said it until she saw it. She told him signifying folks all is well. You got to learn to have a response all is well. All is well. Hello, somebody. Number six, you got to make your request known. In this text, this sister was bold and she was courageous. When she got ready to do some complaining, she wasn't sitting around and just having vain babbling with the, uh, the peanut gallery. But she went back to the man of God and she was bold. I'm in a text, y'all. Don't look at me like that. She went and she said, Elijah, did I ask you for a son? Did not say, don't be prophet lying and be speaking all this mess in my life, trying to get me hyped up. I didn't ask for no son, but this same son you prophesied, this same son that God blessed me with, is now laying at the point of death. What you going to do? Elijah said, well, this shooter might want me. I'm going to send my adjutant, Gehazi, with my stick. She said, you can send whoever you want to send. I'm paraphrasing. I ain't going nowhere. Until you go. You got to be that bold to hold on to the horns of the altar and say, God, I refuse to let this thing go. God, you gave me the vision. God, you gave me the provision. So, God, doggone it, I'm waiting on you. If you don't speak, I don't know what to do. I need to hear from you. God can handle you being bold. He can handle you being courageous. But you got to say what you mean and mean what you say. In this text, this woman said exactly what she meant, and guess what happened? Elijah got his coat, his hat, and he went to stepping. I'm in the text. So verse 33, Elijah shows up, and he performed CPR. Elijah got to the room, C, he closed the door. So the Bible said that everything be established by two or three witnesses. In this same text, we got two times the door has been closed. So could that be a confirmation? Some of you need to close the door for the second time. Elijah got there. He shut the door to keep out all the spectators, the imitators, the dictators, and the agitators. P, he began to pray. C, P, and then suddenly, boom, 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 boom. Oh, a resurrection took place. Uh, Elijah put his eye on the boy's eye. He put his nose on the boy's nose. Y'all know the story. He laid out and stretched over the boy, and then suddenly the boy sneezed seven times. So could it be if you get your mind right, if you simply stay focused, you begin to activate your faith, you have a positive confession, and say what you mean and mean what you say, that God will show up and resurrect what appears to be dead in your life. I'm just saying, could it be? So 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 tells us, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. Did y'all catch that? That's a promise. That sounds to me like all I do is win, 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 no matter what. That lets me know God is on my side and I'm a winner. And you can and will make a comeback. The Bible says, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. You got to keep fighting. And point number seven, as I prepare to take my seat, you got to fight with your praise. You have got to fight with your praise no matter what. Don't you know your praise is a weapon of mass destruction? It confuses the enemy. Let me give you a scripture to put on it. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19 declares, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall be any fruit in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Neither shall be any herds in the stall. But yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Is there anybody up in here that say yet? I will rejoice, yet I will joy in the God of my salvation. Has anybody got a yet praise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show y'all what happened. You over here praising, and the devil didn't gave you a death sentence. But you said, I will rejoice. Your money is funny, and your change is strange. Yet, 
I will rejoice. Your husband had lost his mind sleeping with the devil with the blue dress on. Yet, I will rejoice. The devil is confused. Wait, 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 wait. Why is she still shouting? And I sent cancer. Wait, wait, wait. Why is he in the back back there praising? And I sent that demise. What is she doing praising? And her son is locked up in jail. Why is he over praising? I sent this and that, this and that. I just want to say, devil, let me explain something to you. I want to talk to him like Sophia told Mist on the color purple. All my life, I had to fight. I fought my way through poverty. I fought my way through school. I fought my way through domestic violence. I fought through that and this. And you think this is going to stop me? You done lost your rabbit mind. Yet, I will rejoice. Somebody say fight. Slap your neighbor five and tell him SOS. What does SOS mean? Slide over some. Because when I start thinking of the last battle that he brought me through, when I start thinking over the last trial and test that he saw me through, it gets me excited. Because I know that if he did it before, he'll do it again. So I'm going to fight with my praise. Excuse me if I'm a little loud. Excuse me if I step on your foot. But the truth is this. You wasn't there when I was about to lose my mind. You wasn't there when I was ready to throw in the towel. But since I made it on broken pieces, yet I will rejoice. Somebody lift your voice and say thank you. Thank you. You got to fight. You got to make it up in your mind. I don't care how much more time you got, but don't you dare give up and throw in the towel. You got to fight. The same way this woman, she fought for her child. Fight for your spiritual baby, your demon project. Fight for your purpose. Fight and keep on pushing. Because it is more to be done by you and to be done through you. Somebody is waiting for you to get in position. You ain't got no choice but to fight. So in closing, we may not always understand the ways of God but keep on fighting. You may not understand why you living in fear. You have fears of the unknown, fear of failure, fear of rejection, but keep on fighting. You may be frustrated and agitated because you don't know why all of this is happening, but keep on fighting. So in closing, there's a little poem that says, when people pull you down, as they often will, when the battles that you're fighting is all uphill, When the funds are low and your debts are high, when you're laughing although you'd rather cry, and when you discover yourself slowing down just a bit, stop, take a breath, but don't you quit. Never give up. Whatever the burden you bear, just one more step might get you there. Succeed in believing that you will not. You cannot fail. Use diligence and determination to set your own life for sale. And if you discover yourself slowing down just a bit, I dare you, I double dog dare you to stand up and shout, I will not quit. Let me hear you. What? 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 One more time. What? 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 Tell the devil. What? 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 Fight on. Fight on. Fight on.